Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science, your weekly source for the latest science news. In the headlines this week, the oldest RNA ever recovered has been extracted from a 40,000-year-old mammoth. New discoveries in Svalbard have altered our understanding of how animals recovered from the great dying mass extinction. Researchers have created a microscopic robot that can travel through blood vessels to deliver drugs and much more. What is science if not the pursuit of infinite curiosity? Curiosity box. There's not actually a camera there, but you can just pretend. A curiosity box is perhaps the best possible thing you could ever get. A subscription science goodie box with a plethora of fun stuff to get you thinking. Check out our unboxing in our Sword Dragon video and the link below to get your own curiosity box subscription with our super special affiliate link and our unique discount code. It's dripping quicker, look, look, look! Our top story this week is an astonishing new study reporting on the oldest RNA molecules to have ever been recovered. Incredibly, they come from frozen woolly mammoths, including one individual that died nearly 40,000 years ago. This mammoth, a juvenile named Yuka, was unearthed from Siberian permafrost and became so exceptionally well-preserved that RNA, DNA and protein molecules have all been extracted from the ancient remains. The recovery of RNA from such an old carcass is particularly exciting because RNA molecules serve various crucial functions in cells, such as containing coding information, regulating gene expression, and producing proteins. Therefore, these molecules contain a lot of information that isn't available from DNA alone. While DNA molecules have previously been shown to remain somewhat intact in exceptionally well-preserved prehistoric animals for a couple of million years, and ancient proteins have been extracted from fossils up to 24 million years old, it has long been thought that RNA was too unstable after death to survive for long. However, we now know it can last up to 40,000 years, a truly mind-blowing discovery. The researchers extracted muscle tissue samples from yucca and identified RNA molecules coding for proteins involved in muscle contraction and stress responses. As one researcher is quoted as saying, We found signs of cell stress, which is perhaps not surprising, since previous research suggested that yucca was attacked by cave lions shortly before his death. It's absolutely incredible that this level of detail can be determined from such ancient remains. The scientists also detected RNAs that don't encode proteins, including microRNAs. The researchers were particularly excited about these as they provide direct evidence of gene regulation happening in real time in ancient times, a first-of-its-kind discovery. The microRNAs were also used to confirm that this genetic material definitely originated from a woolly mammoth, as they revealed some very rare mammoth-specific mutations. This finding is immensely exciting because it means researchers can now study which genes were switched on or off in a prehistoric organism and investigate prehistoric RNA viruses, such as coronaviruses and influenza, in these ancient Ice Age creatures. A fascinating new discovery to start us off this week. Let us know in the comments your thoughts about this astonishing find. In other paleontology news, this week also saw the publication of a major new paper reporting some very interesting fossil finds made in Svalbard. These fossils were found in rock layers that were deposited just after the infamous Great Dying took place, the end Permian mass extinction, the most catastrophic extinction in Earth's history. It was already understood that certain animal groups recovered from this event in a relatively short amount of geological time. However, precisely how rapidly specific groups of animals bounced back is unclear. Now, excavations undertaken in 2015 on the Arctic island of Spitsbergen have been analysed and have uncovered a rich bone bed of animals that lived about 249 million years ago, just 3 million years after the Great Dying. This new study examined the diversity of creatures inhabiting this area, revealing that a surprisingly intricate ecosystem thrived so soon after the extinction. 
This ecosystem included various ichthyosaur relatives, some of which were adapted to crunch down on hard prey items, while others were the apex predators in this environment. There were also semi-aquatic reptiles, amphibians capable of tolerating salt water, and a diverse array of fishes, including coelacanths and sharks. This unexpectedly complex network of interacting organisms demonstrates how these groups rapidly radiated immediately following the Great Dying, showing that despite the severity of this extinction, life quickly found a way to recover. Up next in this action-packed week for the Paleo News, a new species of Triassic-aged marine reptile has been named. This remarkable animal was uncovered in southwestern China in rocks dating from between 247 and 241 million years ago, and has been named Lijiangosaurus yongshenensis. It's known from a partial skeleton that preserves an enormously long neck, making this reptile resemble the famous long-necked plesiosaurs. However, it is not a plesiosaur. Lijiangosaurus is actually a nothosaur, a group of early relatives of the plesiosaurs, meaning this reptile had convergently evolved an extremely long neck. Remarkably, this new species is now the oldest known example of the Sauropterygians, the larger group that includes both plesiosaurs and nothosaurs, evolving elongate necks containing more than 30 vertebrae. So, Lijiangosaurus predates the plesiosaurs in developing this body plan by millions of years. This creature would have measured over two and a half meters long, or more than eight feet, and had a relatively small skull at the end of its long neck. A fantastic new discovery, demonstrating that nothosaurs were even more diverse than previously thought, and there is still much to learn about them. More paleo news next, as a stunning new fossil of one of the most extravagant reptiles in the fossil record has been described. This is a new skull from the pterosaur species Tupandactylus imperator, which lived about 113 million years ago in what is now Brazil. This amazing flying reptile is a type of pterosaur called a tapijarid, and is well known for its proportionally enormous head crest. Now, a new skull, which is the most complete one found so far, reveals even more about the anatomy of this marvellous creature. One of the most notable aspects of this new discovery is that it shows the back margin of the crest was actually sinuous in shape, not concave or convex, as had previously been reconstructed in paleo art of the animal. Some beautiful paleo art in the actual paper effectively demonstrates this new crest shape. The new specimen also confirms that the crest was higher than it was long. And the structure of the crest is examined too, showing that there is an irregular layer of fibrous structures between the bony supports and the soft tissue portion of the crest. These fibers have been documented in these pterosaurs before, but these ones differ from the related species Topandactylus navigans. Another very exciting new study. This week, we've got another new species of prehistoric reptile as a new kind of crocodilian relative has been discovered. This is a kind of reptile called a poposaurid, large terrestrial predators that lived during the Triassic period, between 248 and 201 million years ago. Many poposaurids ended up convergently evolving to look quite similar to later meat-eating dinosaurs, but this group was diverse with a variety of different species. Some of them even evolved sails on their backs. This new poposauroid is named Tainrakuasuchus bellator, and it was found in Brazil, dating to about 240 million years ago. It's known from a partial skeleton including a slender lower jaw and quite long neck vertebrae. Tainrakuasuchus appears to have been a medium-sized predator, reaching around 2.4 meters in length or 8 feet. It was likely a fairly agile hunter with recurved teeth in those slender jaws that would have made short work of its prey. Another fantastic new species and a brilliant look at one of the formidable predators that existed before the rise of the dinosaurs. In other news, an astonishing new study was published this week in which researchers presented their micro-robotic system that can deliver drugs by sending tiny robots through the bloodstream and then allowing them to dissolve into the body afterwards. This sci-fi sounding technology 
has been tested in the brains of pigs and sheep, in which the researchers inserted the micro robots using a catheter and then used magnetic fields to control their movement in the blood vessels. This magnetic control was possible because the bots themselves are made of tiny beads of gelatin, which contain the intended drug as well as nanoparticles of magnetic iron oxide. To release the drugs from the beads, the researchers used rapidly changing magnetic fields that heated and broke down the gelatin coating. During trials on pigs, they showed that in more than 95% of cases, the micro robots could be guided to release the drugs in the correct location. This represents an important breakthrough, as many drugs that never reach the market are rejected because they are too toxic. Therefore, being able to deliver these drugs directly to the targeted areas can reduce side effects on the rest of the body. More trials are needed before this technology can be tested on humans, but what an extraordinary new study. Last week in 7 Days of Science, we talked about the new Glenn launch and the possibility that it had either been launched or been delayed again at the time the video was uploaded. Well, there was yet another delay, but on Thursday at 5 to 9 pm GMT, the new Glenn rocket launched carrying NASA's Escapade mission. This mission comprises twin satellites that will both be travelling to Mars to analyse how its magnetic field is impacted by our Sun. NASA says data gathered during this mission will help us learn both about the history of the red planet and the present day conditions on the surface, helping pave the way for a future manned mission. The launch itself was a great success, both in terms of getting the payload on its way and, for the first time, the successful landing of Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket booster. Blue Origin is the second company to successfully do this after SpaceX, their New Glenn rocket being much more comparable to SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket than their New Shepard rocket, which has already run successful missions. If you want to learn more about the rocket and the mission, Scott Manley has done an excellent 15-minute video that we'll link in the description. And now a very quick mention to a new picture taken this week of the interstellar comet 3i Atlas. The image was taken by a member of the ICQ Comet Observations Group called Satoru Murata. Atlas is the third interstellar object we've detected in our solar system and it's suspected we will continue to detect many more as our capabilities increase. There's not too much more to say about this that we haven't already, other than it's a really great image. In other news, a rather monumental find has been detailed this week in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. It is a clay figurine that seems to depict a woman and a goose, and it's 12,000 years old. The authors of the paper say that this is the oldest known figurine showing human interaction with an animal. Discovered in northern Israel, the paper posits that it shows a mythological scene, suggesting an animistic belief system. It is also the oldest known naturalistic representation of a woman from Southwest Asia. So, this discovery is massive news for how we understand the emergence and progress of artistic thought and human symbolic expression. The goose is depicted in a typical mating position behind the human female figure, and the researchers believe that the goose represents an animal spirit. Scenes such as these are not uncommon in animistic societies and can symbolise fertility, spiritual beliefs or the sacredness of life. Other archaeological evidence at the site includes the remains of geese that showed that these animals were hunted and butchered around the area. The researchers say that suggestions of a sedentary lifestyle linked with this discovery tell us an enormous amount about the culture of the humans living in the area living all those thousands of years ago. Finally for the news this week, a new study on the effect of bird flu on elephant seals has been published. The bird flu epidemic is sweeping the globe and has killed millions of birds worldwide and spilled over into a growing list of mammals, including humans. It reached South Georgia, a remote island near Antarctica, in 2023. South Georgia is home to the majority of the global population of elephant seals, and scientists have determined that the virus has wiped out nearly half 
of all breeding females. This new study offers the first population level estimate of the outbreak's impact on the South Georgia colony. Using hand-launched drones to photograph the island's three major breeding beaches, scientists compared images taken on the same date in 2022 and 2024. The results were grim. A 47% plunge in breeding females representing the loss of roughly 53,000 seals in just one season. Although the impact of the outbreak will be felt for decades, possibly until the end of the century, marine ecologist Connor Bamford thinks it's unlikely that South Georgia's elephant seal population will face extinction, as it numbers in the hundreds of thousands, offering some resilience. Researchers are urging ongoing monitoring, stressing the need for regular checkups on these vulnerable giants as they attempt to recover from one of the worst disease-driven die-offs in marine mammal history. Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. Be sure to email us at 7dos.stories at gmail.com if you have any research you'd like to see us cover or if you want to let us know how we can improve the show. You can follow 7 Days of Science on Instagram and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. As always, a big thank you to our patrons, including Andrew Kawam, Chang Yin, Chippy Chippy Chapa Chapa, Clara Middleton, Dean A. Bather, Diana Hernandez, Drav Srivastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotist, I Rage, Joran Joydevik, John French, Joseph Ree, Josh Lambert, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Mark Nevin, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nikolaus York, Ralph Balzac, Robert Prietbrzyka Jr., Robert Thomas, Sammy Petrikas, Steve Bradshaw, Thomas F. Conroy III, Timothy N. Tedro, Tracy Merrifield and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.